Hello, this is Mike again from Scratch, and welcome to a quick tutorial on getting uh, Unity set up for development using the Samsung Gear VR, uh, which is the Oculus-powered VR headset. Now, a lot of what I'm going to cover here would actually apply to doing Oculus Rift development as well. And truth of the matter is, in Unity, this is actually quite simple. Now, one of those things to be aware of, though, is a lot of the material out there is wrong or obsolete. Uh, to see, the thing is, in more recent versions of um, Unity uh, 5.3 is what I'm using specifically. The VR has been built directly in. So it used to be you had to add a library and use separate parallel paths of code. Now it's all built in and available under the hood. But there's enough out there, enough difficulty to it. I decided to do a quick video on covering this. Now, in addition, I've done a text based version of everything we're covering here. And I've also done coverage of getting started using Gear VR F, which is Samsung's um, Java based library for doing Gear VR development, as well as getting started using. Using Unreal Engine. So no matter what you're working with, if you want to get started using Gear uh, VR for um, doing uh, virtual reality development, I got you covered. Getting started guides for all the major systems. Uh, for Unity though, let's jump right in. You use base Unity. As I said, we're using version uh, 5.3 point whatever. Uh, the most current version, at least as of the time I do this, 5.3.0 F4. Um, and you just want to go ahead and create a brand new generic project. It doesn't really matter what, so we'll call it how about generic project project and you want to make sure it's 3d doesn't matter the assets you can completely include nothing so this is just like doing normal uh, development in uh, unity so if you've already familiar with unity there's not a ton extra here to cover uh, but there are some specifics and a bit of a spoiler that's actually one of them so let me just go back to the standard layout <laughs> layout default Okay, so welcome to uh, your brand new application. The biggest things we're going to be working are in build settings. Just bring up build settings right here and go over to Android. Now, obviously, there's a couple of things we're going to need to have. You're going to have to have the Android SDK installed and configured, and you're going to need to have an Oculus developer account and a signing key. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, but you're going to want to come into Android here and then player settings. And almost all of the stuff that we're going to configure is in here. So brings it up, here's your settings over here. Uh, nothing really special there. Now all of them obviously are gonna run in landscape, so you can turn off portrait if you wish. Uh, the biggest guys are down here in other settings. A uh, couple things we need to set. First off, that's the biggie right there. Sorry, I can't blow this up. I don't think there's a presentation mode in Unity. But what you're looking for is virtual reality supported. With that checkbox on, you're up and going. That's the biggest setting by far and away that you're going to need to set. But there's a couple other things we need to do. First off, we need to give it an Android style name. So a reverse URL format. So com.game from scratch.vr demo. I might have done that already. So just some gibberish there and another thing is your default Android level um, I believe the earliest supported is uh, KitKat so 4.4 but the ideal is Lollipop at API level 21 so you might as well set that as your minimum level supported because that is frankly your minimum level supported now the biggest challenge you're gonna have when dealing with um, the deploying your application is it needs to be signed that is um, the oculus headset is going to be looking for a signature key somewhere in your application and if you don't have that included it's not going to work now including that is fairly simple but we have to go and get it uh, so first off that's available at oculus.com so you have to register as a developer so go to developer.oculus.com sign up and register and then once you're done go into tools the tools here is going to look for, uh, it creates this OSIG, which is this file we need to put in and install for you. I've already got it, but I'll show you the process of getting it. First off, you have to switch into, all right, so, whoa, hey, stop that. Uh, you need to get the ADB tool, which will be installed in your Android SDK. So go into, uh, in my case, it's under Java and Android SDK, and it's in the folder called Platform Tools. So there's a file here called ADB. And you just want ADB and then devices. And you, your device needs to be plugged in at this point in time. And of course, the only supported devices are the S6, S6 Edge, and Note 4. Now, it's possible the S5, it was supported. I'm not sure if it still is. But you need to have a compatible Samsung phone plugged in right now. And when it's plugged in, you will get this key, basically, that uniquely identifies your phone. Take that, copy it, and paste it into this folder right here, and then click Download File. So we'll generate a file for us that we now need to copy into a specific folder. So first off, we need to go and get a copy of that file. So I've got it here. It's into my downloads, date modified, date modified, 
oh, I'm not in downloads, I'm in documents. Sorry, just a second. Downloads. And it's this guy right here. But I want to actually want the original version, not that one. So switch to name. There. So just grab that file. Your file name is obviously going to be a little bit different. But just go ahead and copy that guy. And then what we want to do is find the directory we just created this in. So in my case, it's here in generic project. And we want the folder assets. And the challenge is the folder we actually want isn't created. So just come in here and go new folder. And once again, all of this is on game from scratch. So if you need step by step, just go to game from scratch. I'll link it below uh, for the processor you want here. But create a folder called plugins inside of it. Create a folder called Android inside of it, create a new folder called assets. So basically we're just creating the native assets directory for your project and just open that guy up and paste your signature file in and that's it. Now if you skip this step, when you go ahead and try and run your application on a device, it's going to crash or some kind of an error message basically saying uh, not safe to run this on the device or similar. So that's why you got to make sure that this process is done. and. Frankly, that's it. Uh, at this point in time, you should be able to go ahead and uh, build and run. I'm not going to. It takes a very long time. Uh, but now it will build and create the APK file and deploy it to your device. Some things to be aware of, however, is your um, it will deploy as um, an application, a normal application. And what you do is you go onto your phone and run that app. And then it will ask you to insert it into your device, um, into your headset. Now you also have the option of running your phone in developer mode. I've got a link down below that will cover how to do that. I've already done a tutorial and a video on how to do that if you don't want to have to plug into your Gear VR every single time. Uh, now at the same time, one of the nice things about Unity is you can do most of the developer right, development right into the uh, um, yeah, in the editor itself, so you don't have to deploy very often. Another challenge you're going to have, and I'll cover this in a different post, is you can't actually USB tether well plugged into the device. So if you want to do any debugging, you're going to have to set up ADB to work in wireless mode. Again, I'll cover that elsewhere. I also covered that in the text version. Uh, so check the link down below if you want to see how to set ADB up to work wirelessly. Uh, but that's about it. That is deploying to um, the Galaxy Note. Now, one last thing or two last things to be aware of, however, um, I did say that you used to have to use the Oculus tools to do uh, VR development in, in Unity. Basically, you used to import a, an asset package from the uh, Oculus SDK to do anything. And since then, Unity has built most of this functionality into the um, in, into Unity itself. However, there's a couple things that aren't fully supported, such as the universal menu and overlays. And for those, you still need to import the native libraries. Now, those are still available. We come in here, uh, go into downloads, and you will see there is the, okay, not the mobile SDK, but what you want is the Oculus Tools, tools uh, you, Oculus Utilities for Unity 5. You can download that archive and still import those tools. Now, they will exist side by side, so if you need to add some functionality from there, you can now. Just be sure you don't use the classes in there like the camera rig or the character controller, etc. Use the new stuff that's built into Unity itself. But if you need the additional functionality, you can still download and import this package. Another big thing is there is a VR example available on the Unity store. Um, see if I can get it quickly this way. Uh, where did you go? All right, I don't have it directly available. Um, but it's available in the, the store. It gets you up and going. It's got about six different examples of how to work with VR. Um, it's also linked on the Game From Scratch site if you want to get up and running. Uh, so this was setting up Unity to run with VR. It's quite simple. Really, for the most part, that guy right there is the one that the magic that powers all of this. Uh, but as you saw, there are a few other steps. And of course, if you do need the additional functionality that's native to the thing, the stuff that's not supported yet, such as overlays and the universal menu support from the Gear VRF, you're still going to need to bring in that other library. But that's for the short term only. Hopefully in new versions of Unity, they're still working to bring this functionality completely in-house. So you should no longer need that SDK very shortly. Now, in addition to this tutorial on getting started with Gear VRF development, sorry, Gear VR development, I've also done one for Unreal Engine and I've done one for Gear VRF, which is Samsung's Java based library. So, no matter how you want to start off doing Gear VR development, I've got you covered. I'll link those down below as well. 
I uh, hope you enjoy that. I hope you enjoy developing for the Gear VR. It's a very cool device and should hold us over until the Oculus Rift arrives. Uh, see you all later. Bye.